The Centers for Disease Control predicts that more than 12 million people in the U.S. will have this condition in the year 2030. We're talking about atrial fibrillation, or AFib. Now, this morning on Ask a Specialist, we'll talk about what you need to know with Dr. Alamelu Ramamurthy, cardiac electrophysiologist at the Queens Medical Center. Good morning, doctor. How are you doing this morning? Good morning. Thank you, Ross. Now, first off, what is atrial fibrillation? So, atrial fibrillation is an abnormal heart rhythm um, that's fairly common. Uh, in fact, it's the commonest heart rhythm disorder over the age of 40. And it's abnormal electrical firing in the top chambers of the heart that can cause the heart rhythm to be fast and irregular. It is also associated with the risk of stroke uh, because it causes the top chambers to pump ineffectively uh, and blood can pool in the heart chamber and form clots those clots can travel through the bloodstream and cause a stroke. Now, what are some of the symptoms of AFib? So, most people um, can feel quite bad. The symptoms vary from patient to patient, but people can feel their heart racing. Uh, they can feel short of breath, tired, fatigued, and oftentimes people have um, an inability to do things that they normally would in terms of exercise or activities. Now, people will be experiencing fatigue, they go to the doctor. So how is AFib treated? Yeah, so there are actually multiple facets of treating atrial fibrillation. Importantly, um, preventing stroke is um, uh, a big aspect of it, and your doctor may prescribe a blood thinner. Medications can be used to control your heart rate in atrial fibrillation. As I mentioned, your heart rate can be very fast, so medications to control the heart rate. And there are stronger medications um, or rhythm medications, if you will, that can be used to prevent occurrence of atrial fibrillation. There are also procedures that we can do um, where we go into the top chambers of the heart and target areas of uh, abnormal electrical firing that cause atrial fibrillation. And this can help to reduce the occurrence of atrial fibrillation and, in fact, reduce the burden of atrial fibrillation. And um, there is, at least uh, of all, uh, to mention weight loss uh, and alcohol cessation uh, uh, are important aspects of reducing occurrences of atrial fibrillation in patients that are suffering from it. Now lastly, and I know this question comes up often with your patients, but is it safe to receive the COVID vaccine if you have AFib? Great question, Ross. Um, yes. So. Unless you have any known uh, allergic response to uh, components of the vaccine, it is safe to take the COVID vaccine if you have atrial fibrillation. There's no contraindication there. All right, good to know there. Now, to learn more about the Queen's Heart Institute, just visit www.queens.org and click on Heart and Vascular Care, or you can call 691 8512 at the punch bowl location or 6913340 at the Queens West Oahu location. Thank you very much, Doctor, for all that information and hopefully you have a great morning. Thank you, Ross. Have a good morning. All right, don't go anywhere, folks, because we'll have more traffic and weather when Wake Up Today continues.